hey guys what's up welcome back welcome back um uh i just first of all want to say thank you to everyone for well we're at 99 subscribers on youtube right now but i think that's about to hit 100 probably soon um the youtube growth has been steady and kind of quicker than i expected i'm very used to like growth on twitch which is not the uh fastest thing uh, on the face of the earth so uh, i was very surprised to see that you guys are like coming out onto youtube and it's like the extended family over here i guess i also want to say thank you because we just hit 300 followers on on, on twitch which is insane like holy holy cow my four-year anniversary on twitch is coming up in november and i'm really excited to i don't know plan like a raffle or something for you guys so I just want to say thanks because we're hitting we hit the 300 and we're about to hit 100 here on youtube so it's kind of a milestone i guess growth has always been like slow and steady for me on the internet like i've never had fast growth ever <laughs> but i'm okay with that um i'm kind of just here for fun i'm not really here to like start anything serious you know and my art um, does well and uh the internet is just a bonus and also before we start, this is important though, and has to do with this video, is that um, the art I'm about to cover may include a triggering content to some. It, there will be some uh, themes of depression <laughs> in my art here. <laughs> it will be a pretty rough, 2016, 2017 are going to be pretty rough in terms of content. It's going to be like a slow and then sudden um, serious content warning for that. And then once I think 2018 and 2019, I will not be covering 2020. We kind of settle down a little bit. Maybe I'll pick out my favorite piece from 2020 to show and my favorite piece from 2021 so far to show you guys. And then because I don't, f I feel like uh, 2020 was not that long ago. I don't need to look at my art from then. But I will show a favorite piece, maybe if I can. Uh, but yeah, let's get started right away. Once again, not editing this. No offense. Don't care. <laughs> uh, I got my copyright-free beats going, and I'm very nervous about covering uh, this this specific year um, when it comes to art for me. So. Okay, first of all, these files, some of them are in the wrong file format, so I'll give it a second to load. All right, so it's all loaded up. Um, 2016 is the trigger warning for the content isn't that serious, but uh, 2017 is by far the most troubling year. And you will see me play a lot with material and different mediums here. And I'll explain a little bit why once we get into it, but I think I'm gonna go from uh, top to bottom seems about okay, I guess. Uh, what's up here? Okay. I did do these. Um, I'll cover these real quick first. Sorry, it always opens on the wrong monitor. <laughs> I'll cover these. Here's like a little gif that I made for the winter of Anarchy, my character that I showed you guys last time. Um, yeah, I actually like this piece, it's not that bad. Uh, and you will see that I like there's <laughs> there's a profile picture I had for a little bit on like back I don't know why they don't allow gifts anymore for profile pictures it really bothers me that like people like websites like Twitter I feel like Twitter's perfect for it doesn't al doesn't allow it um, sad so yeah those are those um, I'm gonna come in here and we're gonna just quickly go through all this here's anarchy right here uh this is a new reference for him from the time and i haven't really changed his design much since because after 2016 and 2017 i kind of fall out of the furry art world and take art a little bit more seriously not that furry art isn't serious it's just that uh, my interests waned away from it quite a bit Anyway, yeah, so the emo boy, let's see if it'll let me just pan over. Okay, make sure I'm going in the right direction. I am. So uh, you're going to see this a lot. Uh, first of all, I made a lot of original content at this time. 
and I don't really know why I made a lot of original art. Like, you will see that 20, uh, 2020, 2019 me, whatever, I make a lot of fan art and I, I mostly consider myself to be like a fan artist, illustrator, but at this period of my life, I, I made a lot of original content and I don't really understand how I did that because I struggle nowadays to make original content. And when I was reviewing this folder and all my art, when I was moving it over onto my computer, I didn't realize like how much original work I actually make. So you're gonna see a lot of like this um, white, black, red, red accenting quite a bit. It's because I dabbled in it a lot. And I really like deer and antlers, so you're also gonna see a lot of deer and antlers. Uh, this is a Copic illustration. I think, actually, I think that might be Prismacolor. I can really afford Copics. I had a few. I had all the ones in the grayscale, which is why you'll see a lot of uh, marker drawings in grayscale because I had a, I only had Copic markers in grays and I, I did that because oops here my character um, they are mostly white and I just wanted to shade them properly so I bought colors that fit my character so I could draw my character properly <laughs> anyway uh, yeah I remember drawing this and it's actually a really massive drawing and that mouth is nasty looking it. Okay, yep. See, like, uh, so much original art, I can't even, like, I don't even know what this was for or, like, why I drew it. I just drew it to draw it. Another thing that I discovered around this period was, like, uh, watercolor pencils, and I was very excited to play with watercolor pencils a lot. So, what you see here is watercolor pencil, which is a, it's a colored pencil, that when it gets wet, it blends. So it's water soluble colored pencils. And um, I used them quite a bit just cause they were like super easy. I've always found them to be really convenient. Like I could color with these cheap watercolor pencils and it would look good and I would get a lot of pigment out of them. So I used them quite a bit. And there's some of like this speckling that I have going on. I actually still use this a little bit in my illustrations today. You could see it if you look close enough. In some of my drawings, I still use it, and I oftentimes try to include it if I, sometimes I forget to, but I still do use it, and yeah. Maybe a little bit too much of the speckling, but I really wanted to uh, use the speckling um, in my art at the time. Here's this edgy bunny. <laughs> my art is fairly emo. I mean, it's been emo this entire time. Like the past, the past art tour too. It was pretty emo, pretty edgy. But uh, it gets edgier and edgier as we go on. Obviously, I had to issue a content warning for my own art. But a lot of the art that is seriously triggering, I threw out. So, and I don't regret doing that actually at all. Um, but I had to, I had to toss it and so you, you won't see a lot of the art that I made that is quite gory, <laughs> uh, from this era cause it's in a garbage can somewhere. Hopefully, I wonder if like someone found it or something or if it just got tossed away in a landfill. Um, this is with colored pencil and this is 2016 so I feel the need to say uh, why I'm suddenly using only colored pencil and why these illustrations are going to vary in material vastly. And that is because when I, 2016 and 2017, I made some very sour decisions about my lifestyle and got me into quite a bit of trouble. And I wasn't always allowed to have certain art tools on me as a, in that year, those two years, 2016, 2017. I wasn't always allowed to have markers or pencils. Not I, Actually, I was always allowed to have pencils. <laughs> pencils, that's why um, you'll see some of these illustrations, illustrations with air quotes, are in colored pencil. 
only. That's because when they were made, I probably wasn't allowed to use pens or markers. Specifically, those two tools were the things that I really wasn't allowed to use. And uh, colored pencils were like the one thing I was really allowed to use the entire the entirety of the two years. But I fluctuate in and out of like availability or allowance with these tools. And sometimes I'm allowed markers and sometimes I'm allowed pens and sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm allowed to use pens in school if I'm being watched. I don't know, it's like really silly situation. Um, I, when I was a, uh, 17 and 16 years old, I did a lot of stupid stuff. So um, if you're 16 and 17 right now, don't do anything stupid because they'll take away your markers and then you, <laughs> You'll have to use colored pencil. But I, I oftentimes think that this era of art is was a positive. I, I was having a very tough time in my life in 2016 and 2017. But I would say that my art really flourished under these tight restrictions. I'm going to pan over the next drawing. And see, suddenly I'm using marker and pen again. And that's because... First of all, these are out of order, and second of all, um, it fluctuates what I'm allowed to have, what I'm not allowed to have. Here I was allowed use of markers, there I wasn't. Um, just depends on where I was in a like, uh, process towards being a normal human being, <laughs> functioning in normal society. Uh, but yeah, this I actually really like this drawing a lot, and I do think the speckling is a bit much still, and I, I don't calm down until much later with this, like, uh, dot technique here. Wow, this is really high definition image. I could see all the scratchy marks on my paper. <laughs> but yeah, um, I like this drawing a lot, and I'm quite fond of it. It's cute. One thing that I have to say is that a lot of my art from 2016 and 2017 is actually quite wholesome despite what I was what I was up to I guess I was up to only only crime and sin but my art was pretty wholesome for the most part um, of course a few pieces here and there I have to say content warning because sometimes I drew stuff that wasn't mm, perhaps appropriate <laughs> Uh, here's a painting that I did in acrylic, actually. I did this for class and while I was in school. When I was in school. I wasn't in school a whole lot. But when I was in school, I drew this. Um, or painted it, rather. Sorry for the cut there, I just had to sneeze. <laughs> so I, did, I painted this for class and it's with acrylic. And I remember my teacher really hated it. I don't know why. I really was fond of this painting when I did it. I was like so happy with it. I thought it looked sick. I thought it was funny. This lion likes bubbles and stuff. And yeah, I don't know. I was making a lot of weird original stuff that just was like, what's on my mind? I don't know. Lion eating bubbles or blowing bubbles or eating them or what is he doing? I don't know, but something, right? So I was always fond of like just taking weird ideas that came into my head and putting them on paper. Um, here's a cat uh, that I drew. Uh, yeah, this was actually my profile picture for a long time on Instagram and not Twitter because I didn't have Twitter. I didn't make Twitter that that long ago, but Instagram for sure and maybe DeviantArt, maybe I don't know. But it was a profile picture that I had for a long time. And I like it, and perhaps you could see where my line art style comes from now. Uh, this is definitely the beginnings of me understanding ink work and how to lay down a tone with just black and white. I don't know, it's something that I really care about now. You know, my line art, my inking is something that I'm, that's very close and near and dear to my heart. And back then, I think I saw it, you know, starting to arise or whatever. I was starting to care about it right here. Okay, so yeah, here's a digital drawing. There isn't going to be a whole lot of digital art going on, but here's one. <laughs> here's Oops in the style of Cat Scratch. If you know what Cat Scratch is, uh, you get mad brownie points from me. I loved Cat Scratch. I still like Cat Scratch. Uh, it's... Def it's definitely one of my favorite like American cartoons of that era and I wanted to draw oops as a cat, cat scratch character and this was my profile picture for a long time as well because I really like this drawing 
here's one of those um, adopts that I put like on Facebook. <laughs> I said last video, if you haven't seen last video, please go watch my previous video, which is the first part of this art tour. This is a part two, part dos. Um, and as I said before, I drew a lot of these furry characters, um, just made designs up and then put it on Facebook marketplace and then sold them to people that want, were looking for characters uh, or whatever. And I do remember one person messaged me like not that long ago but years after I had sold them a character design like one of these furry ad adoptable characters and messaged me and said hey look I got a fursuit made of this character and I was like oh my god it was so cool I was so happy I was like oh my goodness really really you really is that good <laughs> So this was like, I don't know, I, ha I had a little small business going on here. I'd make like maybe a couple bucks uh, every few weeks, you know, off of this stuff. And uh, yeah, I really like this drawing. <laughs> Ye this is cool, isn't it? You'll see that this red stra string thing here is frequent theme. I really like this piece. And uh, looking back at these, I'm, I'm still like in awe about how much original art I made. Because right now in school, I'm I'm like in concept development class, and I'm beginning to realize just how little of my art recently is original and how much. Because when I first started these classes here on campus, I was super nervous because I thought to myself like, oh my god. I don't make original art. I've never made original art. I'm a fan art artist. I'm a fan artist. I don't know like how to operate. And I, you know, with memory isn't that isn't that great for me, <laughs> especially from this era. Um, but I didn't remember that I had made all this original art. So when I was organizing all these drawings, I was super happy to see that. At some point, I was in fact making original art, and I think that really motivated me to do my homework and be like, have faith in my concepts because uh, I was making concepts back then, and if I did it then, I could do it now. I'm sure. I really love this drawing, and uh, this character is really cool. I'm gonna try to bring them back, maybe. I don't know. I love the coffin tied up to the wolf, and like, I don't know, it's just cool. Uh, yeah, here's more original stuff. This one's a bit weird. <laughs> You'll see, like, I don't sharpen my pencils ever. Like, uh, that's why they look like that. Because I don't sharpen my pencils, I also use really cheap colored pencils. Um, I was using the Crayola ones for a really long time, just because that's what I had. Um, yeah, and when it comes to markers, I, I was using, like, the same Prismacolor markers for the past four years. <laughs> since I started, like, High school. <laughs> I never bought new markers. I just couldn't afford them. They're so expensive. Um, now I do have alcohol markers, and maybe I'll, I should make a video on them. Actually, they're really great alcohol markers, and they are not expensive. Uh, I should make a video on those, shouldn't I? Y'all want a video on my alcohol marker preference these days? Because it's not Copic and it's not Prismacolor. Anyway, yeah, like this character. Pretty cool. I like this a lot too. There's that watercolor pencil look again. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a cool texture, isn't it? Sorry, I'm like zooming in and out like a knucklehead. But I I'm actually a fan of the watercolor texture. The watercolor pencil texture in particular. There's something nice about seeing that pencil texture and then the watery watercolor look on top of it. I don't know, it's kind of nice. And my inking here is done... Uh, pretty cute as well. This is a cute drawing. Definitely one of my favorites from this time. And I think this was a part of like an Instagram challenge, possibly. Uh, I wonder if this hashtag like still exists. I should go check. Yeah, hey guys, check this out. <laughs> yeah, there, it does still exist. I mean, I don't know when these were posted. Two, 268 weeks ago, so. I wonder if I scroll down, will I see mine or something? These are so cute. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so this was definitely part of an Instagram challenge. And I uh, don't know who started it. 
I guess the person's name was Milk that started it, but here we have a bunch of cats that are dressed up as crayons, and I'm sure mine is in here somewhere, but there's like 300 something crayon cats in here, so I'm not gonna scroll through like the recent section of it or anything. That'd be uh, way too much, but there you go. Um, 8-2016, yeah, so. Um, yeah, more original art. Uh, this, like, red accenting I used a lot, and I miss it. <laughs> I, the thing with digital is that I have access to, like, every color under the sun with digital art, and I've been doing digital illustration pretty consistently now. So, I always forget to, like, Add, you know, add stylistic choices when it comes to theme and, and whatnot. And a lot of this theming that I had back then, I miss it. And uh, this like red with the black and like, like the black and gray, I actually like miss doing that. And I wish I would do more of it. Uh, hint, hint to myself, you know, why don't you actually like sit down and get your, get your art style back, but my art style was lost when I started like taking art fundamentals into account, <laughs> you know? I started studying really hard and I was like, okay. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Um, I think that's some kind of marker. Who knows? Uh, yeah, here's oops. Yeah, you could, my markers are dying here. You could tell by how streaky they are. They weren't doing well, but I tried to make it look on purpose, you know? I tried to be like, oh, my markers aren't dying. This is on purpose. Like, it's meant to look blurred. And I think it actually came out okay with that. Like, the intention comes through somehow with that. And <laughs> it's pretty neat. I don't draw oops a whole lot as much as I did in previous years. But, um, yeah, lots of original stuff. Look at this. There's that watercolor pencil again, baby. Woo! I don't remember drawing this at all, but I think it's funny. And I like that the mouse, either the mouse is the dad or the snake is the dad. And I'm assuming that the snake is the dad. And snakes eat mice. So I'm a, I'm a class comedian, you know, I'm, I'm so funny. <laughs> Here's more deer art. Uh, here's more deer art. I drew a lot of deer, of course. Uh, yeah, more watercolor pencil, more of that speckling, uh, more of like you could see other things that I've drawn through the paper because I was messy. I was a messy kid. And yeah, we're going like backwards in time because now this is 7 2016, so. These aren't exactly in order, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter that much. Um, yeah, I drew a, a heck ton of deer. And something that I that I didn't keep really in mind is like where I put my cross hatching. I didn't really think about it, I guess. Um, but I'm not about to like hate on my art from back then. The anatomy is really bad. I know you, I know like it's funny to make fun of cringy and art, but also I was 16. So, or maybe 17 if I was lucky. So I, I feel bad like shitting on myself because this is honestly the most exploration I've done with my art ever. Like I still haven't done this much exploration. This piece is pretty neat. Um, yeah, I also start using reference for some of these. So I definitely looked at a deer to draw this. <laughs> and uh, this is watercolor and pencil uh 12 16 you could see that i wrote the day in um crayola marker and that's because that at this when i drew this i had access to like nothing like this is all crayola <laughs> even the watercolor i think is like crayola watercolor um so something that sucks is that like I just wasn't allowed to use a lot of stuff. Um, I, I would have penned this probably if I had the chance or I would have markered it. But I think it looks really good as a watercolor. And I was not using watercolor paper. I had like a cheap sketchbook. 
but I always thought that it was cool, despite everything that was going on with me at the time, that being limited with what I could use taught me mediums that I would never have thought to use before. Like, the reason why I enjoy watercolor to this day is because I was forced to use watercolor in high school. I had no other options. Like, I was handed a watercolor palette and they basically said, this is what you get because we're not giving you alcohol markers <laughs> and you don't like Crayola markers and sharp, not even Sharpies. Sharpies are a big no for sure. So a lot of the times um, it taught me things like with this piece, you could see I'm starting to learn about watercolor slowly. And then back to digital. These pieces are at, I, they're either out of order or I was fluctuating with, you know, my, uh, how do I say, my journey towards being a good citizen, <laughs> being a good American citizen, I don't know, here's a drawing of oops, I like this one a lot, it's cute, um, yeah, not so much digital art from, from this era for sure, I just wasn't on the internet a whole lot, and I wasn't always allowed on the internet either, obviously, if I'm not allowed markers, I'm definitely not allowed on the internet. <laughs> Uh, yeah, more colored, colored, colored pencil, colored pencil, watercolor pencil. This is done in like, I can actually tell kind of where I am based on the month. Like, um, June 2016, I wasn't in so much trouble. So I was able to use most of the tools and the watercolor pencil was actually, I mean, that was not due to limitations. That was just my own choice of using it. I stole, I stole. I stole, guys, I'm sorry. I stole, and from a public school, I'm even more sorry. I stole a box of watercolor pencils from my uh, my art teacher. <laughs> my art classroom, I'm sorry, I feel bad. It is a public school, but it's a rich town. Okay, guys, it's a rich town. But I know, look, like most art teachers buy their own supplies and whatnot. Um, I was a bad a bad kid and I stole things a lot so <laughs> I stole a pack of watercolor pencils and I used them but um, that's that's because I couldn't really afford to get new markers or um, anything and watercolor pencils are super convenient I only owned one paintbrush you just lay them down and you smudge it around with some water and I thought that was sick like I'm like, damn, this is a cheap and fast way, and these pencils will last me a long time. Uh, this is digital. I actually can't stand this drawing at all. This is a background just I copied and pasted it from the movie. I was trying to get good at digital art. Uh, I, I was not good at it, obviously. Um, I could have done better, for sure, with this one. I like this piece a lot. <laughs> this is with marker and everything. Um... But it was done in November of 2016. Wait, is 10 November? 10 is November, right? No, October. I don't know how I had access to these materials, which is, uh, you know, the other drawing that I did in the same month was with only watercolor and Crayola watercolor and colored pencils with that. And then another one is done in full alcohol marker and, and pen and you're like, uh, what was going on? Um, sometimes I'd be a good noodle, other times I'd be a bad noodle and it, it would like change with the week, you know? <laughs> Every week it was something different with me. Like, it just, you just never knew what I was about to do. I was so uh, erratic. <laughs> Sometimes I just decided to, to to be a knucklehead and sometimes I was like, okay, time to calm down and be a good a good noodle. <laughs> um, and I, I don't know. I was a weird I was weird um, in high school. I was definitely like strange. And a lot of students uh, I joke about this a lot on stream. I don't I've never talked about this on YouTube. So this is a first for YouTube conversations, but like my friends always joke about me, uh, joke about it now to me. But back then in 2016 and 2017, I had like mad groupies, like anime style, 
a bunch of girls swarming around you, writing you love letters. Literally, I have a stack of love letters in New Jersey in my closet. Groupies. Like, no, I am not even joking. And it's so funny to me that that was a thing. And it's also so funny to me that the minute I got my shit together, the groupies disbanded. <laughs> I think that I was very mysterious and like had a lot of weird stuff going on in my life and they found that to be intriguing or like dangerous. They found me to be dangerous, you know? Um, so they were, att they attached themselves to me and they were always younger than me too. It's like at least, a, at least a year or two younger than me. And in high school, that's a big, that's a big gap. So I just always thought it was funny. Um, I still have all those love letters too. I feel I feel bad though about um, all those all those girls. There were no guys that no no men ever wrote me love letters. First of all, it was all girls, all high school girls, and I felt super bad. I was like, oh my gosh. I feel, I don't know if I felt bad then. I think back then I just didn't care that I had groupies. I did not care. I was like, I remember one time someone came up to me and was like. Oh, there's like a group of girls like huddled outside the room right now waiting to see you through the window. I'm like, what? What? Why? I, I'm... <laughs> why? And it's stuff like that, you know? Like stuff that you'd, that you'd see in anime. And sometimes I watch anime. Like I was watching Onisama-e and those girls got mad groupies in that anime. And I'm always like, that's so unrealistic. And then I think about myself in high school and I'm like, oh, no, it's actually not that unrealistic. And it totally happens. And if you've ever seen Oni Samui, that's like, it's, I, I hate that show. It's so bad, but it's also eerily similar to my high school experience. Funny enough, <laughs> except the ending. <laughs> Except the ending, man. Not the ending. The ending's so bad. If, if it had a different ending, I think I would have liked it more. Anyway, he's just, here's a self-portrait. Uh, Copic markers. I... Uh, I really wanted this sweater. And I never got it. Obviously. I was big into Vaporwave. And I liked Vaporwave fashion a lot. And I wanted a sweater that looked like this. And I think I draw it a couple times, actually, so you might see it again. But I don't look like this. Um, no, I don't. My bad. <laughs> I never drew- I always uh, gave myself a lot of uh, good looks in my drawings. I don't- I hate this drawing. I actually can't stand it. It's like so ugly. I don't know why I did this. Um, I was just experimenting a lot with my art. And this was one of those moments where it doesn't always come out good. A lot of times it comes out terrible. And this is definitely one of those moments where it, I don't like how it came out. I do like this, but there's just... N the, I, I, there, everything from this era, there's like, I'm like on the brink of something. You know, I'm about to be better at art, yet I'm still experimenting. I'm still learning, so the art isn't perfect. That's kind of what's happening, like, with this drawing here. Um, the watercolor pencil is nice, and the reds are nice, and the theme of the piece is really nice, carrying this this bouquet. It's really it's cute. Um, it's lovely. I, was, I don't know how I thought of this kind of thing, but I, I was thinking things. I, sa I said, like, whenever I would think of something, I would just draw it. Like, I, I didn't question it. I would just draw whatever I was thinking. And this is definitely that case here. Here's Oops again. This drawing is very solid, I feel. I don't know what it is about this drawing, but it feels very um, grounded. Like, it looks like I know what I'm doing when I drew this, if you know what that means. Like, I, ha I have confidence in my abilities here. Um, yeah, I, you know, so I drew this for Halloween. I'm 100% sure that I drew this for Halloween. And I don't normally draw draw oops with a lot of like gore themes. I try to keep the character away from that. Even back then when I was drawing a lot of gore, which is in the garbage now, um, I, I distance oops from the gore because it was a character that I, I didn't want the character to have anything to do 
with my mental health or the, the uh, sins I was doing at the time. I didn't want the character anywhere near any of that. So I think that was the right decision too. I oftentimes see artists um, and furry artists in particular, like get rid of characters that they've, that they've kept for years as their character because they act, they, when they were going through a tough time, they made art or commissioned art or did things with the character that they regret and they don't want, like, the character reminds them of a shitty time. So I made it, I made it, and I knew that, that was a thing. I knew that people did that when I was, when I was going through stuff. I knew that was a thing that people, it happens, you know? You associate media, like, like maybe uh, you have a movie that reminds you of a bad breakup or something and you don't want to watch it ever again even though you love that movie. Same thing with this like like furry characters. When you have a persona sometimes you um, go through something and the persona gets involved because that's a coping mechanism and then you abandon the character or you sell them. And I always thought that was sad. And I designed Oops with the sole purpose to be a positive character so, I don't know why I'm ranting about this. This is kind of a weird rant, isn't it? I'm it a very strange rant, but I am ranting about this. So, Oops is a character art that I designed to be distanced from everything that was going on. And I am very grateful for that, because it is a character that I still really like. For that reason. The reason of... I'm never gonna draw gore of this character, except maybe for Halloween for shits and giggles, like this drawing. And I'm never gonna draw this character in any situations that would be depressing or emotional or sad or whatever. That was just the motto. Like, oops has rules when I draw this character. I can't be putting them in, in stuff that, you know, would hurt them. It's like a character, I take care of them. <laughs> it's my son. <laughs> So I don't know why I did that rant, but that's just a rant. <laughs> that's that's a little rant about my <laughs> about furry art culture, I guess. Um, that's very it's very common in furry furry communities. In case you didn't know that, I've seen so many artists get rid of their OCs because they drew them or commissioned art of them in situations that they regret later on because they tried to use the character as a coping method and they regret it. Um, anyway, yeah, here's Forrester. By the way, that doesn't mean that you can't draw your characters in, in tough situations. And I see artists that like, uh, they have vent art that involves their OC. Um, and they don't, like, it doesn't affect them at all. And years later, they still have the character. It's still their character. It's still what they identify with. But... I was, I was different in the way that I wanted to distance. That, that was my coping skill, was having a character that could like be happy all the time. Um, while others oftentimes will put their characters through the same thing that they go through, <laughs> I did the opposite. <laughs> and I'm grateful for that. Anyway, here's Forrester. This is the last time you'll see Forrester. Um, different design, but it still has the alligator tail. This character is going to just cease to exist after this. So I'm sorry if you liked him, but as the furry art gets out of fashion, uh, for me at least, he vanishes and a lot of the other characters vanish slowly. 2017 will be the last year that you'll see most of these characters come up. Here's Franky. <laughs> this is a real cat, based on a real cat. Franky the cat. Um, yeah, I drew Franky here. I think, yeah, Franky does have green eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Franky's favorite color was green. I don't, I didn't, you know, I don't know if that's a legitimate thing that you could check what your cat's favorite color is, but I put several colored hair ties in front of Franky and he picked the green one. So I always said that Franky's favorite color is green. So I'm, I drew him in a green sweater. I, I just a very weird fun fact about a cat that <laughs> I don't know if that's legitimate scientist you tell me did my cat pick the green hair tie because he likes green or just because that's the first one that he noticed <laughs> I don't know <laughs> anyway Frankie's a good lad and I didn't draw him that often but um, when I did he was definitely wearing green 
Yeah, also it's Copic marker. This is Copic marker too. Or it might be Copic. It it might be Prismacolor. Um, it's probably not Copic. I, once again, I didn't own a lot of Copic markers, so it was probably the Prismacolor markers. Because I did have quite a few of the Prismacolor, just because they were slightly cheaper. So slightly easier to convince your parents to give you money for. Um, and yeah, this is a this is a weird drawing, isn't it? So still, like, where am I coming up with this stuff? I don't know. I have I struggle so hard with original ideas now. Like, whenever I sit down to draw, I just want to draw fan art. I never think of like, what if I drew a cat with like two faces, like a two-faced cat that's pink. I never think about stuff like that anymore. No way. Uh, it just doesn't doesn't cross my mind. I I can't stand this drawing. <laughs> This is a massive drawing, too. Uh, I didn't crop out <laughs> the room that I took the picture in, but this is a really terrible dr drawing. I think it's supposed to be a self-portrait. Um, here's this character. Oh, the marker technique isn't that bad, but I probably wasted way too much ink on this one drawing because it's huge. What really bothers me is like this this face right here. <laughs> There's so many things wrong with this. It's so funny. Like this is the worst. This is probably one of the worst faces I've ever drawn. Uh, like the ears. Uh, what? The ear? Huh? The neck and the chin. Um. Yeah, the chin is actually the least offender, but everything is just not right. I did not know what I was doing. I was not good at drawing humans. And I was def I've definitely never drawn a side profile before. Especially because the glasses are just... Like, when you tilt your head to the side, you could barely see your glasses because of the, the angle. So you should just see, like, just a little bit of the lens. Super small. Look at how small that is. You never want to draw glasses like, like that. I can't even do it. Like this. You know? It's not right. But... I didn't know that because I don't use reference. <laughs> I don't use reference, so I didn't know. <laughs> My self-portraits vary. Look at how different I look here. I don't know what the hell I was doing. I think any character that I gave colored short hair was just immediately me. Like It was suddenly a self-portrait. That's the case here for sure. <laughs> Uh, some gut, some gut, guttural artwork, though. Some organs, I guess. Colorful organs, but some organs nonetheless. Uh, yeah, drawing more humans, so that's always fun. And Copic markers are, or I guess Prismacolor, sorry. I keep saying Copic, but it's definitely Prismacolor. Prismacolor marker's always nice. Uh, I don't hate this drawing, but I don't, you know... I don't love it. There's just always something so, like, slightly wrong about all the drawings from this period. That's fine. Yeah! Okay, I remember doing this one. <laughs> Yo, man, I like this piece a lot. I think this might be in the wrong year. No, so... Eh. Yeah, I think, this is, I think this is meant to be in 2017, but it's okay. Uh, there's that red string again. And I knew a guy. I knew a guy. His name is Pete. Pete, I hope you're doing well. <laughs> Pete, I hope you're doing well, man. Um, he, he knew Hebrew, so I asked him to write something cool in Hebrew on my page. And I don't know what it says. You know, I could probably ask Esther. <laughs> Let me take a photo of it. Ask Esther what it is. Like, I have no idea what that says. I just said, hey, Pete, can you write something cool in Hebrew on my, on my paper? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll send that to Esther, for sure. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, lots of skulls and bones and whatnot in my art. Did I skip one? No, I didn't. Ah! Oh, shit. Oh, no, where did it go? <laughs> Get the Windows key, quick! That's not the, that's the wrong Windows key. Ay, ay, ay. There we go. Oh, my goodness, that was scary. That was scary. Here's a polar bear. Uh, this drawing is, like, so whack. It's so whack. My art from here, this era, is just um, very mindless. One thing to note, I didn't usually have access to internet. So normally, and previously with my art, I would like have influences and inspirations and references ready to draw. Like to this day, I still do that. That's something that everyone that's an artist should do. 
But when I drew a lot of these, I didn't draw them with reference or even with like inspiration or anything. A lot of these are just from the back of my brain. I didn't have internet. I, I could have picked up a book or two if I wanted to, but I didn't really that much. There were a couple times where I picked up books from the library and used them for, f with my art um, for reference, but this one, no. Uh, it, it, you know, some things just bother me here and you could really tell that uh, decisions were made stylistically with pieces like this that I've done with uh, mostly inking and swirlies and cross hatching. It's not really cross hatching. It's more so just like uh, lines hatching. It's not cross hatching because they're not crossing. It's just hatching. <laughs> So the hatching and these swirls and the, the speckling again and this weird fur texture. Um, I did a lot of it without much consciousness. You know, when you, when you draw and when I illustrate today, anytime I put a line down, I'm making a conscious choice of why that line is there and why it's needed to get across the point of the drawing. Uh, back then, I didn't really understand that or care for that matter. But that's, that's why you end up with quite a bit of these weird hatchings and whatnot. Because I didn't uh, get it. I didn't understand that every mark that you make with a drawing is made with purpose. And I'm not necessarily unpurposeful with my mark making at this period, but I certainly am um, not really thinking too deeply about it or too, too strongly about how the drawing would be perceived in the future. So something to keep in mind if you're an artist starting out or an experienced artist or whatever and you're watching this, um, every mark that you make on a page is not without purpose. Every line that you make, every mark that you put down, every color you pick, there should be a reason why that you pick that and a reason for how that, you know, communicates the meaning of the piece. That's what I mean. My marker died here. <laughs> My marker died when I was drawing this. Oh, I like this drawing. I, I actually still have, do I still have this leather jacket? I think, yeah, I think this is the same. I think this is the same jacket that I still have. Um, it must be. I've owned the same leather jacket for a long time, and I think that this is the one that I own. I still have it. It's right over there. I actually brought it to school. I was like, I have emotional attachment to this jacket now. It's, it's so old now. It's seen a lot of stuff. The good thing about leather is that uh, you could keep it like forever. So this leather jacket has lasted me so many years. and. I didn't know that you could, that, like, you're supposed to moisturize your leather jackets. My mom taught me this the other day. But apparently, you know, as your leather jacket gets older, it starts getting drier looking and uh, looks a little, you know, dusty, sometimes ashy, like skin, because it is skin, really. It's cow skin. Um, and. I didn't know that you're like supposed to just grab lotion and just rub it on your jacket. I didn't know that. And oh my God, was my leather jacket so thirsty when my mom did that. It didn't happen that long ago, but my mom was like, you really need to moisturize your jacket. I'm like, what are you, what, what are you talking about? Moisturize my jacket. She was like, you need to put lotion on that thing. I'm like, what are you talking about putting lotion on my jacket? What the hell are you on about? Because my mom's owned leather before, obviously. she's She loves leather as well. And I don't know what you're talking about, mom. What do you mean put lotion on my jacket? So she goes and grabs this big bottle of like lotion for people, you know, uh, skin lotion, whatever, and just squirts it out and starts rubbing it all over me while I'm wearing the jacket. And I freak out. I'm like, oh, bro, this is wrong. Like, there's something not right here. Like, this is not okay. It's weird. And then suddenly my jacket just like starts absorbing the, the lotion like crazy. It was so thirsty. My jacket was so dehydrated, man. <laughs> 
This was literally like last year. It, maybe even this year. It might have been this. I think it was this year. And I, I mean, as you can see, this jacket's very old. <laughs> I can't believe it. Like, I had no idea that the leather needs to like be moisturized every now and then. My jacket after that looks good as new. Like, I, it looked like I had just bought it. <laughs> Despite having like a few rips and tears and paint paint on it, you know, some acrylic paint every now and then I got on it, it looked like brand new, shiny. So I didn't know that. Um, just a funny side story, I guess, to go along with this very strange art tour. <laughs> I, you, leather jackets need lotion. So I still have this jacket and it looks great right now. Um, because my mom put lotion all over it. And now now you know, and now I know. And I also drew Franky here, by the way, my cat, once again, Franky. I didn't have Lola at the time, 2016. I didn't know Lola, who's my new cat. New from 2017, but. <laughs> uh, I actually kind of like this drawing, even though it has that swirly texture and those, those uh, fur things once again. I really like the shapes. Uh, and the shading. I think I did it quite well. I, I nailed it, I think. Um, yeah, more of that red line, which you see a lot in my art. And I don't know really what I, where I was getting this Japanese theming. I do know that I was borrowing a book at the time from the library on Japanese art. Uh, from a specific time period, I can't remember. But I was borrowing a book about Japanese illustration and I would oftentimes reference from it letters and stuff so this is definitely a, a word pro probably in kanji but I don't know what it is let me know if you know what the kanji for this letter what this kanji means let me know hit me up <laughs> so that's why there's a lot of that Japanese theming going on I was not a weeb at the time so it wasn't that it was just that I had a book of, on Japanese art uh, this was a a uh, either a request or a art trade I wasn't really getting commissions at the time so it had to have been one of the two and yeah that's not my username anymore by the way but um, I'm, I'm I don't know this is a weird piece but it's kind of cool still not a lot of digital art from this time and it's hard for me to critique this digital art because I don't know, it's so like, it's strange, you know? I, I wasn't doing a lot of digital and I probably rushed this, but the airbrush tool looks way better than it usually does here. <laughs> That's for sure. It's not a terror, it's, it's an upgrade from previous digital drawings. Here's more of that watercolor pencil. Um, here's Anarchy. I thought I wouldn't have drawn him. Oh wait, now he does have a few more drawings left in him before I, I stop. Like 2018, there's probably nothing of him in there, but uh, here there is for sure. 2016 is such a big folder, by the way. That's why I'm doing all these separately in a separate video, because there's so much art from this time. It's nuts. There's just a lot. And yeah, Anarchy looks pretty cool here. As you could probably tell, his design changes all the time. That's because I didn't have it memorized and I didn't always have reference on me for him. So I'd just be like, hey, he's my character. I'll just draw him the way that I want him. Yeah, here's a little bit of blood. <sighs> I drew blood here. It's in December. December, everyone knows December is a terrible month. You know, it's like dark outside. Um, it's a, December is a month of sin and crime for sure. And, and sadness. Um, I don't know which month is the worst month for mental health. I think it's January, but either way, um, I don't think anyone does well in winter. I do, I do fine well, I do fine now in winter. I actually prefer winter over summer nowadays, but I think that's just because I'm a stable human being with uh, stable actions that don't hurt others or myself. <laughs> So yeah, uh, I, I actually really like this drawing and I think I referenced something, but I don't remember what I referenced. Um, but the shapes are pretty cool and stuff, so. 
Here's some uh, Copic and some uh, watercolor pencil. Once again, original stuff. I eventually everything's gonna switch over to fan art. You won't get to see much of it because a lot of it's from 2020, 2021. But at some point, I just stop making original art, and I don't know why. You think when you go into college, you start making more, but I went into college and I just started make, making like a lot of fan art. <laughs> Probably because gen eds um, don't have you doing a lot of serious art. A lot of it is studying perspective and anatomy and color and whatnot. So you're not actually make you're not making like a lot of big illustrations in your gen ed classes in college. A lot of it is studies, which don't get photographed or really posted online for me. I don't really do that. Here's mimic you. I like this drawing a lot. I think it's so cute. Uh, I did a good job. I definitely used reference, that's for sure. Um, I love Mimikyu, and I real I was a big Mimikyu fan when Mimikyu was announced. I think Mimikyu is just a, like a, one of the cutest Pikachu uh, knockoff characters. Cause every now and then Nintendo will try to like make a character that is similar to Pikachu and to ride the fame of Pikachu and it always usually fails and I think every generation they've kind of been doing it more as a joke like here's the Pikachu of this region but Mimikyu for some reason uh, slaps I mean he is a popular popular favorite for sure I love him he's so cute I when he was announced and when people started playing Sun and Moon. I think he's, is he from Sun and Moon? Yeah, I think he's from Sun and Moon. He went very viral. <laughs> and he's still one of my favorite Pokemon. He's just, I mean, it's just so wholesome. Like this character wearing this Pikachu costume to get people to think he's cute. I love it. Here's another deer. I can't stand this drawing. <laughs> you know, the body is not bad. Um, it's not good though, but the face and the head, uh, ugh. This really gets to me, you know? What was I doing? What was I thinking? Why did I make these decisions? I don't actually know, but terrible. Honestly, terrible. <laughs> like, look at the way this antler on the left wraps around the ear and the eyes and the mouth. It just, things to say and they're not good about this drawing. I'm gonna try to go a little bit faster here because we have a lot of art. Uh, this was made with Crayola stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Crayola tools. This is Crayola marker. Look at that. Woo! This is all Crayola marker and, and colored pencil and stuff. Even the line art I think I did in Crayola. I'm not really too sure. I think I used a Crayola marker for the line art. It would make no sense if I didn't because... Well, I also could have inked this piece and then have colored it much later. That's also something that happens. I don't always color things until later on, months later sometimes, so who knows. But yeah, this piece is really is really nice actually. And I re I did reference a um I had this book, I swear, I remember the book. It was not mine. I was borrowing it from a library at the time. And it was cuz I, you know, I wasn't really allowed on the internet that much or that frequently. So I had this big book on Japanese illustration from a certain time period, can't remember. And I would oftentimes reference from that cuz I had a lot of good animal drawings and stuff. I like this piece a lot. I think it's cool. Here's Oops, oh my goodness. This is a, you know, Oops gets, this might be the last reference that I have saved in here of Oops, I'm not too sure. Um, there might be one more after this, and I did one recently, but I don't know where it is. So yeah, but here's Oops again, and uh, it says apostrophe down there, cause that was my username, and sometimes my username was not apostrophe, but here it was. Uh, I've been apostrophe for a long time, I guess, you know. A lot longer than I, f than I remember being apostrophe for. I really like this design and I love the background and the, uh, this, uh, 3D look I did to the reference. It looks really cool. I'm a fan. More oops. Well, I like that I dated the, the day that I drew this. I don't normally do that. <laughs> Copic marker and, yeah. I was in school at the time when I drew this. Uh, there was a point in November when I actually went to school. 
I know it sounds weird, but I really was not attending high school at the time. 2016, 2017, I really didn't go <laughs> that much. But I did go for a little bit in November and a little bit towards graduation. Um, I had FOMO and I didn't want to miss out on like the last few weeks of school before graduation, so I went back. I don't ask me how I did that. I know it like school is very strict in the United States. You're supposed to go, but uh, I worked my way around that a few times in like weird ways, getting people to sign papers and sign off on things without them having read the full text. Like that's how I got to prom my senior year. And that's how I got to school. The last few weeks of school I attended because I got my therapist to sign off on something that she didn't really know what she was signing off on. And I just went to, I went to school for the last few weeks. I say that I think that I tricked her, but I probably didn't trick her. She was very smart. <laughs> I like to say, yeah, I, I fooled my psychologist into letting me back on school grounds for the last few weeks. But in reality, she, I mean, she probably knew that she signed that and she just was humoring me, I guess. Maybe. <laughs> this piece is Crayola. <laughs> I didn't really know what I was doing here. That Japanese art book influenced my work <laughs> a lot <laughs> at the time. And you know, there's a lot of this red thread everywhere. There's a lot of red dangly things in Japanese illustration. Uh, and yeah, I, I did reference quite a bit of it, but it wasn't always good referencing. Um, it was just nice to have a book that was inspiring me as an artist because I wasn't getting any inspiration online or anything, so. I was, I was glad that I had something to look at and that something was that book and I'm, I'm happy about it. I don't necessarily like the art, but it's the best I could do with Crayola tools. <laughs> and then back to Copic, I mean, what's up? Uh, the marker died down here though. Every now and then your markers die and I like this drawing a lot. But I don't think it, I, I don't think it's me. I think I drew Pete here. I'm not too sure. Um, I mentioned Pete earlier. I don't talk to Pete anymore. I don't know where he is, what he's doing, what he's up to. But I think I drew him here. I'm not too sure. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. I think I would never draw myself wearing this color. I think so, now, or this hair. So it must have been him. And obviously it still looks like the way that I would draw myself because I like didn't have that much experience drawing people. And I swear that this is Pete. Pete, I hope you're well. <laughs> Sorry, this is sideways? Uh, there we go. <laughs> Here's a nice deer again. The antlers look like coral and the head is huge. And ah, uh, the anatomy. Ah, it's killing me, isn't it? It's like terrible. What? What was I thinking? I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. It's really funny. Uh, the the feet are so small, aren't they? <laughs> it's nice to be able to laugh at this kind of stuff. Like, what? I didn't have any reference, obviously. I wasn't using reference, which is probably the worst part about all this. I picked up that book on Japanese illustration. You think I would have picked up a book on deer or something? That couldn't have been that hard to find. Come on. I gotta go through these quicker. This is cute. Uh, the crown. Love that. This is definitely me, though. It's not Pete this time. I drew myself here. Because I'm wearing a crown. Because I'm a god. <laughs> this is a cute drawing, though. Watercolor pencil and I guess that's Prismacolor up there. I'm just gonna try to speed run a little bit here because this video is already so long and I haven't even gotten to 2017 yet. So my gosh, like what time is it? Like we really gotta, gotta hurry up. Uh, more Crayola stuff. There's Franky again and uh, yeah, pretty cool. I thought there was gonna, oh, there's that, there's that sweater I told you was gonna come back up. It did come back. I, I really thought there was more triggering content in all this, but I guess not. Uh, here's another drawing of Oops. Um, I'm pretty confident with my drawings of oops at the time. I, 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 you know, I never needed reference for my own character here because I had his uh, look memorized at all times. I like this piece a lot. This character is pretty cool over here. He, uh, I draw him quite a bit, but I don't really anymore. I love the design and 
these little tiny feet, these little feats, and the little tiny books, and uh, I wasn't very good at, at what I was doing, but it's just funny to me, like, the anatomy and the, the arm, but I was trying, I was trying, I was like, I'm done making silly furry art, I'm gonna make a really important and cool human art with interesting character designs and I don't know I was thinking about doing something cool this piece is weird <sighs> it's like a liminal space the perspective here is weird but also I don't normally draw backgrounds so it's always cool to see myself draw a background every now and then from this time period because I was scared of backgrounds and I still am scared of backgrounds I still don't draw them <laughs> like like interior building shots or exterior shots or whatever I still don't really do it but this is just like a really strange drawing I guess the perspective is un unusual and I didn't know where to make the perspective points meet didn't make sense in my head so I just put a bunch of skulls there but it gives the drawing a very like eerie and unusual feeling of like lopsidedness and I think that it pairs well with this green bathwater and this nasty character and this weird pear drawing and this deer head. Like, the, the, the terrible perspective matches with the unusual content that I put in this drawing. And that's what makes this piece funny to me. I'm going way, like, what is up here in the jars of embryo? Is that an embryo? Ew. Anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to go a little bit faster. This piece is weird. Um, I don't know if I'd seen Utena or haven't seen Utena at this point in my life. I can't really remember. I think I definitely have. It depends on what month this was drawn, because I think I saw Utena for the first time in 2016, if I'm not correct. So, I think I was 16 when I saw it. If it was earlier in the year, then I might have already... If it was later in the year, I probably already seen it. But if it was earlier, I might not have. Um, Weird drawing. Lots of red. Uh, oh my god. Uh, I'm not gonna, I can't do another story time here, but I, I feel like I have to talk about this. Um, I was I was trying to get a shiny Rowlet. I was trying to get shiny Rowlet and Sun and Moon. I was trying so hard. I would breed Rowlet all day. I would like Google the stats of what are the odds of me getting a Rowlet that's shiny out of an egg from the egg hatching method. And I would I would like calculate how many hours per day I would need to play for how many days. So I would bring my DS to school, and this was probably November then. Bring my DS to school and I would just play nonstop all day long, like sneakily in class or at lunch or whatever, just trying to get the shiny Rowlet. And I never got one, I still don't have one. I still don't have shiny Rowlet. It makes me so angry. It, it, it enrages me. I, I never got it. I bred so many Rowlets. I, I was so overwhelmed by how many I had. It was such overwhelming experience. <laughs> and I, I, so many people probably out there have my Rowlets because I bred them and wonder traded them like crazy or I traded them to my friends or whatever. It was so bad. I had so many. It was insane. <laughs> anyway, that's a quick story time. <laughs> More of that red car car color, coloring, color. I really love red. It's like one of my favorite colors. Yeah, it's my favorite color for art and it might be my favorite color in general, actually. The color red, I think is just a gorgeous color, isn't it? And the vibrancy of red and uh, the uses of it. I mean, from red you get pink and I love pink too. So red's an all around great color. I mean, what do you get from blue? Like teal? There's the sirens outside. I don't know if you guys could hear that. Let's see. Can you hear it? You were you were probably able to hear it just then, but <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, there you go. Uh, yeah, more uh, more of that Crayola whatnots situations. There's like some acrylic splatter going on back here too. Sometimes I would just like color a page with colors and whatnot and then just throw something on top of it later. 
Uh, mostly because the markers that I was using a lot were Crayola markers and they're washable. So if you tried to color them with uh, alcohol markers or watercolor, they would oftentimes smudge. So I would a lot of times lay down a shit ton of color beforehand and then come in and do the line art. And there's better ways to do that, obviously, but I wasn't very smart, so I didn't do it the smart way. <laughs> the smart way would be to like sketch in pencil, color it, and then ink it, but not everyone's smart. Here's another piece with a background and uh, the perspective's not terrible here. It, it's not completely correct, but it's something that isn't completely wrong either. Uh, this is a fun drawing. What, like, where am I getting these ideas from? I don't know. I keep saying this, but it fascinates me that I had so much original work back then. My sketchbook now is just like fan art, fan art, fan art, more fan art. But back then it was like, here's some original concepts I'm thinking of in my brain and I drew them now and here they are, a dragon taking care of plants in a greenhouse and there's a little TV and whatnot. How did I do it? I don't know. I don't know how I did it. I'm s I'm still fascinated. <laughs> I think I sold this character. <laughs> I like I like the idea of like a like a uh, a deer with tea bags on their antlers. I thought it was funny and it is kind of funny actually. I think I sold this character on Facebook if I'm not correct. Um yeah, weird furry art still, but Less and less of it as we go on, right? You're seeing less and less furry art as we go through all these drawings. It's pretty wild. Damn, this one recording is already a half hour. We have got to go. I, this video is gonna be so long, oh my god. Uh, I really like this drawing. I did it with watercolor pencil and ink. Uh, it's really cute. I think it's adorable. I don't know whose character this is. Sometimes I would just draw characters just to draw them. I'm trying to speed run, go. I drew these teeth with ink, they're really nice. I really was a big fan of teeth, and these were done with ballpoint pen, and then I splattered some Crayola watercolor on there to make it look cool. And yeah, I ripped this straight off my Instagram. This is event drawing, I apologize. I said a content warning, but the art is really bad, so I feel like the content warning isn't that serious, because the art is shit. Unless you're seriously uh, weak, weak of heart, um, this might be triggering to you, but it isn't to me because the art is really not not that great uh, No explanation for this one. Just a lot of red and I'll just skip right over it then. I like this drawing. I Like this piece. Ah, I'm so smart. Look at these little birds on top of this tiger Wow, I like how I went from that terrible vent drawing to like this. They were probably drawn pretty close in time to each other, too It's just so funny uh, it's just so cute. What a cute cut. And there's a little bell on his tail. Come on. That's adorable to me. That's like so cute. I don't know. Uh, where was I getting this? How do I access this knowledge of like original work? Here's Victor Nikivarov from Yuri on Ice. <laughs> this is a uh, Yuri on Ice was the first anime that I watched um, in a long time. Like I had never gone out of my way to watch an anime before. Whenever I'd watch anime, it, it just so happened to be on TV at the time. That's how I watched like Death Note and um, Death Note, Dragon Ball, etc. I just watched those shows because they were on TV at the time. Yuri on Ice is the start of me going out of my way to watch an anime and after this, it was like a downward spiral. I just started watching a lot of anime. I was never big on anime in high school until I watched Yuri on Ice, and then I went to college and decided I was a weeb. Um, here's a furry drawing. This one's digital, and I think this is one of the f last pieces in this folder. Uh, this is actually a, a, a drawing of a character that I had in Feral Heart that I drew here for funs. Anyone play Feral Heart? Y'all play Feral Heart? I like this drawing of Anarchy. It's pretty cool. The mouth is the mouth is interesting, and I think it came out nice. He looks he looks like you know he looks like himself. He looks cool. Eyebrows. His eyebrows are always weird though to me. And there's a little a uh, 
one of those little pixel profile pictures of him. <laughs> I did a lot of these little guys um, on my laptop. I would like go into MS Paint and do little pixel art and a little uh, little tiny canvas. It was always so much fun. Here's one of Oops, and these all floated too, but they're not animated anymore. These are just the PNGs left over. But they, they did used to like float and stuff, and they were slightly animated GIFs. All right, that's 2016. Oh my god. Oh, 2017 is probably huge too. Oh, Jesus. Oh my god, there's so much. <laughs> So 2017 is a half and half year. Half the year I was struggling with shit and the second half of the year I was not. Everything was okay. Like I drew this at a good, no, actually this is with Crayola. I was not in a good spot when I drew this. It's always hard to tell because sometimes my, my art doesn't usually reflect my mood. So it's always difficult for me to tell. Um, what the hell I'm going through, but yeah, February, oof, that was a rough month. I hate February. Here's a self-portrait. There's that jacket. I swear, um, I've had the jacket for a long time, and I still love it. I have it with me. I haven't worn it. I brought a bunch of jackets and, like, sweaters and stuff down, and I don't need any of them. It's so freaking hot here. Uh, this is with some Crayola. See, like, in February 2017 was one of the worst months of my life, and I'm out here drawing this really silly, uh, cat, cat anatomy drawing. I think it's so funny. Um, what was I going through? I don't know. I, I, I was just not caring. Like, I don't care how depressed or how edgy I am. I'm gonna draw this really cute artwork. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> this drawing is cute. This one's cool. I definitely used that Japanese illustration book here for sure. And there's that kanji again. I don't know what that means, guys. I'm sorry. I can't read that, but I did uh, copy it off of something. I like how there's a cross because Japanese art is very Catholic, as everyone knows. Uh, yeah, colored pencil and uh, looks like micron inking. So materials are weird all the time. Sometimes I could use some, sometimes I can't. Um, I don't know. It's just weird. Sometimes I color things way later too. So here's Anarchy. I really like this piece. And yeah, I think it's cool. This is, you know, my furry art kind of starts peaking around this couple, couple years here. Uh, 2018 too. And then it just stops. That's fine. I'm okay with it stopping. Here's Blue Star. <laughs> I drew this digitally, and I'm not I'm not a hater of this drawing. It's okay. It's probably one of the last, one of the last few furry drawings that I make. Though I have to say, like I'm really starting to wind down in this year. Here's oops. These are all out of order too. So, 2017 oops. This drawing's pretty pretty funky. Um, yeah, I feel like I feel like I have to go kind of fast here because we don't got a lot of. I mean. This video is so long. Like, do I care at this point that it's this long? Or should I just let it happen? Because the last video was an hour. I was hoping to make this one an hour, but there's so much art. Uh, here's more really bad Crayola watercolors. And I think it's just, I drew Franky too, of course, my cat. I, I still didn't have Lola at this time. Uh, we adopted Lola in like August of 2017 and this is January, so. Lola drawings are much later, if any, really. Most of my Lola drawings are, are gory, too, as a joke. Uh, I'll explain that later when we get to that. Here's a art trade that I did on DeviantArt. Um, yeah, digital art for once. Still using that damn airbrush. Still using that airbrush, but the multiply tool looks fine, I guess. Uh, yeah, friends to enemies to lovers with the airbrush tool for me. This piece is a lot to look at, I have to say. Uh, I don't know why I did a lot of this line art like this. This inking style is very weird to me, and I don't know why I did it like that all the time. It's just way too much red stuff, too. I like the red stuff, but this is overkill, for real. I'm, like, flaming my art, but... I don't know. It's nice to look back and be able to critique your work, because when I drew this, I probably thought it was great. And now I'm looking back, and I'm like... 
I could do way better than this for sure. Come on. Oh, here's Lola. Oh my goodness. Okay, so first of all, I just want to say that I drew this in a stable place. There was a turning point in 2017 where I got my shit together, and this is after that turning point, so I was doing fine mentally. A lot of my gory art comes from after my mental instability. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why that is. It just happens that way. Sometimes you feel fine and you decide it's time to draw a lot of guts. Uh, this is also why I issued a content warning, though, because I drew a lot of gore. And I didn't throw all the gore that I threw out was from that tough time in my life. But any gore that I kept, I think, for the most part, was just as a joke. So with Lola here, I used to draw a lot of drawings or doodles of Lola, my cat. You could tell it's her because her teeth are jacked up. Um, or it's more like loosely inspired slash based off of her. I always thought that Lola was a creep, especially in 2017, 2018. Lola gave off this vibe like that she wanted to murder you. Like I, we always would call her a yandere because she would stalk me around and only cared about me. And I always joke that she's some kind of yandere. <laughs> she pulling a Mirai Nikki on us. Um, this was an art trade, I think, probably on DeviantArt once again. More digital, right? Pretty weird to see digital art. There's an air, light airbrushing going on here, but it's not terrible. Um, it's also just not the best drawing, but hey, man, what am I going to say? I don't know what's going on with the neck, but uh, I hope this person is happy with the art I did for them. <laughs> anyway, they knew what they were signing up for. Uh, there's that emo bunny again. Yeah. I drew a lot of this bunny. I, I don't know why. I think I just thought it was funny. A lot of this stuff, I just thought it's funny to draw something like this and then make it kind of dark. Like, this is pretty funny, just drawing this bunny with, like, blood packets. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> this is without the crappy watercolors again. Oh my goodness. I, the, I remember using these watercolors and being like, Watercolor sucks, man! I hate watercolor! When I'm done with this, I'm never doing watercolor ever again. Watercolor's awful. Obviously, I, sometimes I just, that was the only thing I could use. But I love that I just, I hated watercolor. I was like, man, I hate watercolor. Watercolor's awful. It, look at how uh, weird it looks. And like the texture is chalky and stuff. It's because I was using Crayola. You, you buy good watercolors. If you've never owned good watercolors, please go out and just dabble a little bit. Get a couple colors, mix them together, make more colors. I give it a try because watercolor is really nice when you have decent, even decent watercolor. It's like Winsor Newton or something. Uh, this piece is fun. I, I did like the koi fish theme for a while. I was a, I was a fan of the kois with the yin yang, the kois. And I actually like this wolf face up here. It's not too bad. It's very furry, but it's like not terrible. Um, and I don't know what material this is drawn in. I can't really tell if it's watercolor or if it's... I think it's watercolor. I don't think it's marker. My technique is getting better then. <laughs> yeah, this is with watercolor. Oh, that's so crazy. It looks like not bad. Somehow I made the Crayola watercolors not look terrible, and I, that's so funny. Um, yeah, and Crayola marker for the red and whatnot. Somehow I, somehow I made it work. I'm still referencing that Japanese illustration book. I, I was borrowing that book for a long time. I wonder if I have it. Like, I wonder if I accidentally stole it. Um, I usually don't steal books on purpose. I always steal books on accident. I stole a lot of art supplies, but... If I ever had a book, sometimes I just forgot to return it. It happened a lot, and uh, I think I returned this book. I don't think I stole it, because I don't have it. I think I would know if I still had it. Uh, this piece is, is... I actually like this piece. I think it's pretty cool. It is a bit of a vent drawing, for sure, but... Um, the character design is pretty sweet, honestly. It's so weird to me that sometimes I just smack out these random characters and then don't draw them ever again, like furry-wise. And that's why I ended up selling a lot of these designs on like Facebook Marketplace and stuff, because I would just knock them out, just start randomly drawing 
animal furry characters and then never use them again. Like this character, this isn't a character that I have, it's just like, I don't know, some, some wolf dude that I drew, I guess. Isn't that strange? It's like, what am I, uh, what's the purpose? I don't know. But I like this drawing, the blood is really nice. <laughs> And I like that it says no on this weird metal band across his nose. It's pretty cool. Solid. And the colored pencil technique isn't bad, so. This is a character that, um, I, I, I don't know what he, what he was for. He was for something, but I don't remember what it was. And I, I remember I drew this after graduating high school. I did graduate high school, by the way. I, I did go to graduation. I walked. Somehow I managed to walk. I don't know. <laughs> you asked me. I don't know. I don't know why, how I got that permission for that, but I did. And I drew this character after I graduated, but I don't remember what they were for or like why I drew them. I wish I could tell you. This is weird. Um, pencil and watercolor that water those watercolors i remember that watercolor set too it was it was crayola and it was just like so not good and i had one brush i didn't i didn't have like a bunch of brushes or anything i just had one flat flat small flat brush and i'd use it for everything and it was terrible 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 experience there's see it says lola <laughs> Oh, the gory art content warning. It's too late to issue a content warning. I did at the beginning. If you didn't listen to my content warning, I'm sorry, but you should have listened because there is gore art in here and I knew that and that's why I warned you. Um, it is comedically though. And it's funny because Lola doesn't have these teeth anymore, actually. You could tell she's missing one of her top teeth in the drawing, but later on she gets the rest of these teeth, these top teeth removed as well. She has a couple of these incisors, just a few. I think like two or three, probably two up there. They're like the tiniest little teeth she has up there. But yeah, the canine is gone for sure. So um, it really dates her, <laughs> the drawing. It really dates it because she doesn't got those teeth anymore. She got them removed. But the blood is really nice. I actually really like how I drew it. Very vibrant and yeah. Good gory art. Good gory cat drawing. <laughs> I would always joke about how Lola's some kind of psycho freak and that she's like some kind of yandere. And I was, I was so harsh on poor Lola back then too. My parents are harsh on her back then too, like making fun of her for being creepy and stalking me and stuff. And it was 2017, she was just settling into our house and she got really attached to me. And I didn't, at the time I didn't really realize I think I didn't really realize just how attached she had gotten to me. And she was like legitimately shy about it too. Like she would watch me from behind the corner. She'd peer out at me and like stare at me from really far away in a different room. And she'd always be watching me. I'd turn around and she'd be, it was creepy. I'd turn around, she'd be like peering around the corner, staring at me. And she would think that I couldn't be able to see her. Cause it's like, if, if mother cannot see me, if I cannot see mother, then she cannot see me, right? That's how it works. If I hide my one eyeball behind the corner, she cannot see me. But that's what I think that's what Lola thinks. She has bad object permanence. And I just always thought that she was some kind of like creepy stalker, like plotting to maybe kill me in like a loving way. And it just turned out she was like a really shy and really really liked me and didn't know how to properly express that it's really cute it's really funny but so i drew a lot of gory art of her and i don't see her this way anymore because i she slowly like evolved into this different little cat it's so such a wholesome story her life is <laughs> such a good cat such a good cat um and Frankie liked her too which was good <laughs> It was good that Frankie liked Lola. Um, thank God. I can't imagine if if they didn't like each other. That would be so bad, wouldn't it? Um, that would have been I would have been a whole different story. So here's more of that uh, red. Yeah, more of that imagery. Um, that circle thing is nothing, but 
Uh, the other two might be kanji that I that actually exist that I referenced. I don't know what it would be, but the circles definitely are not kanji. I've never seen a kanji like that. <laughs> here's some. Oh my god! Here's some Hoseki no Kuni art. Uh, spoiler. I can't believe that anime came out that long ago. But I guess it did, huh? Um, I can't believe that Lapis has been around for that long either. Like, uh, cause I, I don't remember if I read the manga before I saw Hoseki no Kuni or if I watched the anime before I saw, before I read the manga. I can't remember which order it went in, but uh, yeah, it's like, I didn't know this character even existed back then, but I guess so. And this was, I had just started and you'll think this is crazy, but I had just started streaming on Twitch when I drew this. I drew this on Twitch um, in 2017. 2017 was the first year I streamed on Twitch. I streamed on Twitch. Uh, my first stream was November 11th, 2017. And that's actually the anniversary is coming up. So I'll do something soon for that, I'm sure. I love this drawing. It's so funny. But, uh, you know, okay, so Lola, I don't see her like this anymore, but it's still a really funny drawing. <laughs> She looks insane. Like, I, I can't with this. This was one of the first times I drew a digital drawing and I was like kind of happy about it. Well, I kind of thought it was nice. And I agree, it does look really cool. And I and I drew this in Medibang, by the way. The last drawing too that I did digitally. These are in Medibang paint or Medibang Pro? Is it Med it's Medibang Pro, right? Medibang, I drew these in Medibang, which is, uh. The art software that I recommend if you're looking for free software, by the way, Medibang is the best one for free. I have to vouch for it. It has so many features and it's just for free. Obviously I use Clip Studio Paint now, but Medibang is the way to go. For real, if you're looking for a free art software that is um, versatile and does a lot of things. Anyway, I love this drawing. Uh, my technique is really good here and you could tell that like I'm finally settling into digital. I'm finally saying, okay, I'm gonna give this a try and I'm gonna work hard on it. And of course I drew Lola as a yandere with a knife, like getting ready to like kill me maybe. <laughs> she's such a good cat. I swear to God, she doesn't act, she's not crazy at all. She doesn't even know how to bite. Like she doesn't get it. She, she never bites people, but if she, I play with her sometimes a little rough and she'll like, go to like nipple on me, but she doesn't get how to bite. So she like puts my finger in her mouth and then just like leaves it in there. She doesn't bite down. She thinks that counts for some reason. Probably because she's never been bit, I guess. So she doesn't get it. Or she knows that it hurts, so she doesn't want to hurt you. But she's really a wholesome cat. Yeah, more digital. Like I'm finally um, kind of getting the hang of it, right? Like this is a pretty good drawing, I think. I'd say this is the start of me exploring digital art in a professional manner. You know what I mean? Because before it was just for fun and getting furry commissions done and every furry did, did the uh, digital art thing. So I wanted to, and it's fan art by the way. The shift has, has occurred. The shift has occurred. Uh, we switched to fan art. <laughs> but anyway. I'm, I'm just, I think here I'm finally saying, okay, I'm gonna stream on Twitch and I'm gonna learn how to do digital art on Twitch and I'm gonna use Medibang and I'm gonna be professional about it and I'm gonna go to college too and get better at art. And that was my mindset. More Land of the Lustrous fan art. Hoseki no Kuni. I do a lot of fan art from here on out. You'll probably be able to tell. Some original stuff here and there, but um, a lot of fan art. Some original furry stuff. I was kind of floating away from the furry community at this point in my life, but would still occasionally make a drawing here and there. Like this one. Um, so, yeah. It says apostrophe. It's actually backwards, but <laughs> that happens when you flip the canvas too many times, you get confused about which way your drawing is facing. Uh, this is a very clean drawing, really. It's not shaded, and the line art is really good. I think there's like a serious shift here. Like you could really tell here that my digital art skills have evolved immensely. Why did they evolve so fast? Because I just decided I would sit down and do it more. That's the only reason why. 
I sat down and I said, I'm gonna stream on Twitch and I'm gonna do art on Twitch. And it has to be digital because it's on Twitch. And suddenly I, I'm, I'm doing better at digital art. This one too. Um, I really like this piece and yeah, man, it's cool. It's one of the first times I drew my character Ryder who I don't know if there's any art of her later, I apologize, but she doesn't look like this anymore. All the skin tone is the same, I guess. Her skin tone has not changed. She still um, has that similar complexion. I really like this drawing and I think it uses the digital tools that I have very well. It looks really cool. I don't know how I got this effect. <laughs> it looks awesome. I wish I could tell you how I did it. I don't know. Princess Mononoke. Copic piece or Prismacolor? Probably Prismacolor. Probably Prismacolor. Uh, yeah, more fan art, less furry art. You know, I'm starting to evolve slowly. Every now and then I touch the furry art, but a lot of times I'm doing fan art because I'm watching anime and I'm, I'm enjoying things again. You know, I like things again. There's media that I enjoy again, so media like this like i'm watching i probably saw princess mononoke it was one of my favorite movies at the time so i wanted to draw uh some fan art here's oops this is a good drawing right it's solid what the hell's going on my art suddenly improved wow imagine your mental health improves and you have access to the internet again and suddenly your art gets better no surprises there the only sad thing is i lose a lot of my style from like back when i was in high school. Here I'm out of high school. I graduated at this point. Um, this is a cute drawing. I really like how it looks. Oops looks good here, right? And then we go back a little bit. All these are out of order. What am I gonna do? This is watercolor Crayola. Crayola watercolor. <laughs> I definitely lined this before at some point and then had to come back in and color it later. That happens. It's a good drawing though. See, like a lot of this red style and whatnot, the style that I had at the time goes away. Really, it vanishes. I don't have this style anymore, like thematically or whatever. Um, here's a little a uh, business card. <laughs> I'm not reading this whole thing. Yeah, feel free to pause it and look at it, but it's not my username anymore, so don't bother with it. I like this drawing. Uh, there are things that are weird about it, and then there are some things that are really cool about it. It's N from Pokemon. Look at that line art brush. Looks familiar, right? Yeah, I still use a similar brush. I still do. This, like, uh, cut across line for shading, I was always a big fan of. You've seen it a few times at this point, and I continue to use it quite a bit. Yeah, shaded. It's slightly painted, actually, um, but I don't really do that anymore, you know. Here you might be able to see a lot of my style that, that is still my style today, like through this drawing, maybe. The, the line art brush, definitely. I still use a brush just like that. Here's uh, some Utena art. Oh my goodness, Utena fan art. I drew this way after I saw Utena, though. I didn't make Utena fan art for a long time until much later, but yeah, I think this is my first, uh, I don't think this is my first Utena fan art. I don't know if I photographed the first one or not. I wouldn't even be able to remember, but this is my first big Utena illustration that I did, and it's not the best, but like, it's not terrible either. Um, it's a good digital drawing, like the background is nice, and I, and I pursued things that I don't normally draw here, and I think that's cool. It's always nice to, like, experiment a little bit with your art. And I definitely experimented here, so. Here's Oops. I really like this drawing. This is one of my favorite drawings of Oops. Uh, the legs and the anatomy. Just good shape. Good shape, structure. Just looks good. I don't know how, how I did it. It looks good. More Lola. <laughs> I'm sad that Lola doesn't have that, that tooth anymore. And she has like this little underbite now where she like sticks her little two bottom. She has her two bottom canines still. And those are nice and healthy teeth. And they like get stuck on her lips sometimes. So she looks like she's got a little underbite. But she doesn't have that like tooth like tooth sticking out anymore. Just like she used to. 
But those are song lyrics, I think. Um, yeah, I don't know. She's not like this anymore. Uh, she wasn't like that then. I just, I was making fun of her. I feel bad. I don't feel that bad. It's really funny. I don't, she, obviously she didn't care that I was drawing her like this. Like, she's such a good cat. I love her so much, but it's just so funny that I, I thought she was some kind of like psycho cat. Um, she was never like mean or anything. Like there's a lot of, you know, like my cat from hell levels of mean. She would never hiss or growl at you or swat at you ever. She was, she's very, very timid and she never did that. But the way that she would stalk me around the house, she just wanted to come and cuddle with me, man. But she didn't know how to ask, you know? She probably didn't get a lot of cuddles before we had her and like, uh, just wanted some cuddling. She came from a very troubling place before she was with us. She was in a lot of distress all the time, so. When we, we adopted her as an adult. We adopted her when she was maybe like three or four years old. So um, she had went through some stuff and thus like didn't know how to like ask for love properly, I guess. And she's still very shy and very timid and like very like sweet, you know, like the girl in class that just reads all day and is very, very quiet, but also very nice and will buy you the nicest Valentine's Day gift ever. She's like that. <laughs> this character design is cool. I still really like this. Uh, there's that bad watercolor again, but there's nothing I can do about that. I think it's cool. Like how I did the, um, the owl covering the eye is a really cool concept. Like maybe he's blind and the owl sees for him. That's actually a really interesting concept. I might have to write that down and use that for something. <laughs> that would be, that's actually so cool. I can't believe I never thought about using that. I'm in college now trying to use it, trying to get individual, uh, sorry, original ideas. And I need to write that down. That's kind of sick. I think I will use that in something. Don't be surprised. <laughs> Here's Philip. Philip is this character that I made. Um, when I was in a tough spot in, in, in 2017 and 2016, but mostly 2017, because that's when I made Philip, uh, I made these two characters named Philip and Ed, and I would draw comics of them and like give them to people because where I was, a lot of the people that I were interacting with were also in a similar situation to me. And my comics would always make people laugh, so I would always give them to people to cheer them up. And Ed and Philip were always the main characters of those comics. So that's who they are. Philip's a gargoyle thing? I don't know what he is. There's a self portrait. Wow, I don't look like that. Ah, but I did have pink hair at one point. I've had every shade of hair you could possibly have. All in the span of like three years in high school, I had every color. Uh, now I don't really color my hair. I'm not a big fan of it. I don't really like colored hair anymore. I don't know why. I think it's cringy. Is that- that's so mean. <laughs> I like- I, I like natural colors. Um, I have like this black and white thing going on and in a few years I might find that totally cringy, but I- I still think it's cool still. And it's not like purple or something crazy. I could actually get a job with this hair if I wanted to. <laughs> Here's Edgar Allan Poe, <laughs> anime. <laughs> you know those anime drawings of like George Washington? This gives me the same energy. Like anime, Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> it's really funny to me. Oh my gosh. Look at him, <laughs> whatever. We have to go fast. Here's one of those initial drawings of Philip. Um, but at the time when I drew this, uh, Philip didn't have a uh, character design. So Ed was this alien, but I, I didn't know what Philip was gonna be yet. So I think this drawing is still funny though, really. I think it's kind of funny. And then see, Philip's arms are alien arms. I didn't know he was gonna be like some kind of gargoyle creature yet, but yeah, pretty funny. I had a top notch comedy, truly relatable comedian. <laughs> Uh, this was supposed to be a self-portrait. Um, it's really weird, isn't it? I think I was watching The Walking Dead. <laughs> is that strange? This is a Walking Dead self-portrait. 
Uh, it's weird. Isn't it gross? Ew. There's anarchy again. Oh my goodness. There he is. The boy. He made a bag. He's back from the land of the dead. Um, it's still making furry art. Every now and then I drop a furry banger. That did not sound right. Every now and then I drop a banger furry drawing. That still doesn't sound right. Every now and then I dropped a, I drop a pretty fire furry drawing onto the internet. And, uh, I mean, they're not that great drawings, obviously. I, you know, high school art, whatever, but I don't know. It's pretty good, I guess. Oh, sad. <laughs> this drawing is so sad. I did this for something, but I don't remember what it was for. I, like, I know it was for... I don't know what it was for. I was for something. That's all I could tell you. I drew this for something, and I don't know what. But I think it's really, like, sad. And this poor dog character looking up into the rain. Um, how depressing that is. Oh my god. I'm tired. Ooh. Oh my gosh. I'm getting sleepy. I need to take a nap. We've been recording this for way too long. It is a day that I could finally take a nap too. I could nap today. Oh my gosh. Here is... I like this. A drawing that I like. I just like the angular look to it. Um, it just looks cool. Uh, the eye get, loses me a little bit. Once again, just too much hatching going on. But the angularness of the, sn of the snout, I really, really like that. It looks really nice. And, you know, it's something that evolves over time with my style, too. I feel my, my liner, my angular liner, it's still something that's, that's a thing. Definitely. Here's Foxy, boy. I was so excited when Five Nights at Freddy's gave Foxy an accordion. I've never mentioned Five Nights at Freddy's, me liking Five Nights at Freddy's before, until right now. I don't think that's ever been documented. Uh, but I just want to say that when they gave Foxy an accordion, I got very excited. I'm not a serious Five Nights at Freddy's fan. I'm not in the fandom, I guess, if you could call it that. Um, but I do really love the games. I really love Five Nights at Freddy's games. They are so much fun, and I've played like all of them. And I love the accordion, and I was so excited. I was like, the accordion's been acknowledged by Five Nights at Freddy's. Foxy has one. So, very hype about that. I drew this without reference, though, so I'm sorry if he looks off model. I didn't have a reference on me. I drew this in class, I think. Um, Sarzamai came out. <laughs> I actually have these as stickers up on Redbubble, and every now and then they sell, someone buys them. <laughs> every, like, once every year, someone buys the Sarzamai stickers that I have on Redbubble, and then I just get sent a dollar to my PayPal. It's so funny. I'm like, damn, you guys are really uh, craving content. But I like this this sticker design. It's really cute. If I was smart, I'd bring this back and like print these out for. I could, I could get these, uh, get the file for this and print these out for Anime NYC. That'd be pretty smart. I should do that. This is a character redraw. I, this is a character that I had when I was in. Um, middle school and I redrew them here they were I think they were a character part of my book and yeah I really I would love to redraw them again because this eye like the design doesn't make a whole lot of sense but it'd be interesting to see if I could try to imitate that look re more realistically now I wonder um I really love this character though he's really edgy but also very soft-spoken guy <laughs> Here's more Hoseki no Kuni fan art. And this is with watercolor and ink. Um, I don't know what to say about this one. I made a lot of Hoseki no Kuni art. I was very active on the Amino for Hoseki no Kuni, and now I'm not. <laughs> Here's Apostle, who's a character that I also had in middle school that I redrew. And he's like this angel dog. I don't know if I showed you guys him earlier or not. I might not have. A lot of the art didn't make it, but he is a character that I had at the time. More Vaporwave vibe, by the way. I was a big Vaporwave fan. This is good. Not not a bad digital drawing. Not a, not bad. Uh, I didn't color this. 
<laughs> I did the inking and asked someone else to color it with their colored pencils. I didn't color it. I Sometimes you just don't want to color your art and then people like coloring things so you just give them your art and ask them to color it and it works out. Here's another Lola. <laughs> Yo, the, uh, the it's in her arm. Oh, I didn't. Ooh, ooh, I didn't notice that. Oh, I don't remember drawing these. Obviously, I, <laughs> look, I've made a lot of art. I'm not gonna remember every drawing that I've made. Like this is it's so terrible. Oh, <laughs> I did. I think I just got into college though when I when I drew this. By the way, I just want to say I drew these in class. The sketchbook is like this big that they're in. A little thing. And I would take it to class and draw really small. In my my first classes at community college, I started a semester late at community college, but it was, still was 2017. I think it was winter semester rather than fall. That's, just, that's fine, right? Who cares? Um, another self-portrait. I still have that stuffed animal. I bought him at Comic-Con once. I think. Look at those tiny feet. Uh, he's definitely from Comic Con. I don't know if I. I don't know. I think he's from Comic Con. Yeah. Tiny, tiny, tiny feet. Dude, I uh, didn't know how to draw feet. This is a funny drawing though. It's not bad, is it? It's not terrible. I love this drawing. It's one of my favorite drawings from that era of my life. Uh, accurately depicts my art, my art style and theming at the time, which was skulls with antlers with red stuff with random shapes and uh black and gray and that was kind of this piece kind of explains all you need to know about my art from the time it sums it all up into one and the shapes are really nice and it's got that angular inking style so i think it's pretty good you know uh it sums it up well doesn't it <laughs> i think i auctioned this character off too by the way but uh, this is like a jigsaw monkey character based off of like jigsaw from saw kind of a cool character design when you think about it uh yeah see these are all out of order because here's that shitty watercolor again and i'm back in the dumps here <laughs> when i drew this there's that sweater again oh my gosh can you believe it there it is again the uh, maybe i should design a sweater that looks like that I wouldn't want it in white, though. I'd probably get it in, like, black. That's so funny. Um, I actually have a tattoo that looks just like that mountain range, though. I just I just made the connection in my mind between this sweater that I kept drawing on myself and the tattoo that I have from high school that I don't really remember where I got the idea from. And that just clicked in my mind. I have this little tattoo on my thigh that I did in high school that I did in high school no comment on that but i just made the connection it looks just like this sweater design and i i guess i didn't i, I don't i don't i don't remember much from that year you know why i did things and what i was thinking but it's pretty cool to make the connection i didn't know that it was a design that i had in my mind for a long time i guess before i tattooed it onto my thigh uh, and there's Frankie again, by the way, so here's Philip and Ed once more, another little short comic that I drew for probably my friends at the time that were also in a similar spot as me. Uh, not bad, not bad, not bad. Yeah, Phil here is his uh, gargoyle, gargoyle self, I guess. More watercolor, there's that skull character again. I don't know, yeah, I guess you would call him a character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, pretty cool. I don't, I don't hate this drawing, but I'll, I'm just a little, I'm still like a little bit sad that a lot of the style that I had going on from this time, I don't use anymore. Um, with the red and the skulls and the, uh, like the thematic of the theme of my art back then it's like lost now i don't really use it and it kind of bums me out to think about that here's a tiger <laughs> i don't know what that says guys someone tell me read the kanji for me and tell me what that says because i have no idea what that says no clue guys no clue once again i just had this book with me i guess and 
stole kanji out of it every now and then. Let me know. Might be Chinese even. Who knows? <laughs> um, more Lola. Oh, yeah, she doesn't have that tooth anymore. <laughs> I'm big sad. <laughs> you can't really tell it's Lola either, because I, like, I don't color. When I draw Lola now, I make sure to draw her as a Siamese. Like, she's got like the uh, color variation going on. But I never did that here. The only reason why you could tell that it's her is because her teeth are jacked. <laughs> And her eyes are big. This drawing is sad, isn't it? It's so depressing. Why would I draw something this sad? I remember drawing this and it was, I'm like, okay. I'm obviously very emotional when I drew this. What a depressing drawing. Anyway, <laughs> here's more oops. What a good lad. Look at those big ears, man. Those are huge. I'm in college at this point. I'm de I definitely am in college when I do this. Here's Yellow Diamond from Hoseki no Kuni. I really like this piece still. It's watercolor and ink. And yeah, I, I love, I like it. I don't love it. I like it a lot though. I think it's really cool. I don't know. You know, starting to do more fan art. Uh, starting to watch more anime for sure. Uh, I drew these sprites for a project that I was working on, but I can't remember what it was about. I apologize. Here's a furry character that I that I had at the time, and I still own this character, I guess, but I don't make much art of them. But she's really cute. I love her character design. Uh, I don't own too many cute characters, but this is one of them. Punchy. I was drawing a lot of Animal Crossing art at the time, too. I was praying that like they would release a new Animal Crossing game and we wouldn't get one until 2020. <laughs> this is for uh, someone on Instagram who I still, I still, I spoke to them recently, I think on Discord and yeah, I like this drawing. I don't remember. I think this was an art trade. I'm not too sure. Maybe it was a request. Mm, I opened up, I would take requests all the time. All the time. But I like this. It's cute, isn't it? This is I think they still have this character. I'm not too sure. Stitches! Yeah, I was like, where's the new Animal Crossing game? Are we ever gonna get one? No, not anytime soon. 2017, you got like three more years until that happens. Three more years in a pandemic until that happens. Yeah, the sprite work. I don't know what the sprite work was for. I'm sorry. Is that it? Oh my god. Oh my gosh, we're going at mock speed. We're actually not. This video is so long already. All right, 2018. It's short, okay? I've done all this art. Uh, you might have seen it all already. It's on my website. So I'm going to speed run it. Watercolor painting, Asuka. I love it. I love Evangelion. I love Evangelion. Asuka's my favorite of the children characters, period. Boogie Pop. I'm reading Boogie Pop right now. I, <laughs> I bought it, read a few chapters, and then didn't finish it. And I, and I picked it back up again here at college. I'm gonna finally finish it after three, three years, I guess, of trying to get myself to read it. It's really long, because I have the, the, um, the collector's edition that's like three books in one. Here's Diamond from Hoseki no Kuni. Digital art, I really like this drawing. I don't know how I did her eyes, but I've always been a big fan of how I drew her eyes here. This was my my anime list profile picture for a long, long time. I think I only recently changed it. Here's a Jirachi, uh, Gajinka? Is that how you say it? Gajinka? Yeah, but someone else's Jirachi design and I made fan art of the design. And this is watercolor as well. Uh, yeah, I'm really into watercolor. I'm still really into watercolor. I do watercolor still. Here's Joe, literally Sam's cat. His name is Joe, and I drew him as a Jojo, because his name is Jojo. I drew him as, I think it's Jotaro. I've never seen, I've seen a few episodes of Jojo, and I didn't like it and turned it off. But here's Joe as, as, as Joe, <laughs> from Jojo, <laughs> from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, I guess. <laughs> here's a Mojo Jojo piece. I like this, this is a really cool traditional mixed medium piece I did with some trash in my room. And it's, I, ha I have it hung up somewhere still. I just think it's cool. Um, Myth and Royd fan art, baby. What obscure thing to make fan art of is like a 
Japanese band called Myth and Royd. I love Myth and Royd. Their music is awesome. And the lead singer saw this drawing and liked it on Twitter. I've done good. I've been noticed. <laughs> I got noticed. <laughs> As someone who I don't speak the language that they speak, but she did like my drawing, so thank you. More Hoseki, draw more Hoseki drawings. I think I have the speed paint of this posted on YouTube. It might be unlisted now, but I think it's still, it might still be there for you to watch. Um, yeah, I like this piece a lot. I referenced the manga panel for sure for it, but it's still cool and always, always fun to see me do digital art. And I was doing all these on stream too, digital pieces. This was in my, this is in my sketchbook. Um, yeah, more, I mean, Hoseki no Kuni spoilers may ensue here, but I don't know if we're getting another season of the anime, so I'm expecting that you've read the manga if you like the show, but I love this drawing. This is really cool. Ink work looking good, right? Anatomy looking good too. The anatomy is correct here. It looks right. Like the head might be a little bit too big, but I always have that as a problem. Uh, sorry, this one is messed up. I did this for class. This is cut paper, by the way. I cut up little pieces of paper to make this. And it was fun. I got an A. <laughs> I got an A in like all my classes though, so I don't know. You could say what you will, but I had fun making this. This is also in my sketchbook, little ink piece. There's Ryder again. I thought she wasn't going to come back, but this is a character. It's one of my few consistent human characters that I have. And I'm still working on this damn webcomic. I've been working on it for a long time, and I don't know if I'll ever be done or ready to be posted on Webtoon, but one day I'll finish a script and I'll just start drawing, and it'll be online. And you'll see. You'll see. One day I'll do it, I swear. There, there are very few things that I that I don't finish, or, and this is one of them. And the reason why that is is because I've been hyping up myself to make this webtoon since I was like in middle school. That was when I wrote the first script for it. So I'm like, I struggle with expectations with myself and I get very anxious when I work on this project because my expectations for myself are so high and I'm still working on it because of that, so I won't- it, it won't go online until I see it as perfect in my mind. Period. Uh, there's Yellow Diamond again. <gasps> oh! I closed the folder! <laughs> Where's my file explorer? Ah, uh, gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, gimme, gimme! And I accidentally opened Cortana too. Okay. Uh, uh, let me go over here. Right, 2019! I'm just gonna quickly blow through 2019 too. Uh, all my, this is in gouache. I really like this piece, shading is nice. I still uh, love gouache. Uh, yeah, more human drawing. This is on Duralar, which is a material that is interesting to work with. Feel free to Google it if you wanna learn more about Duralar. And also with uh, paint, paint, paint markers. Paint pens, Posca. Here's the first thing I've ever animated, and it's a little messy, but it's just Evangelion fan art animation thing going on. It's very quick. It's just meant to loop, and yeah, I don't know. It's kind of nice. I might I would put this in my animation reel if I had to make one right now. <laughs> Here's Nanami. I drew this for Chieko, and it was the first drawing I ever made on my iPad. Christened my iPad with it. And I was so happy about drawing on my iPad. It feels so nice to draw on an iPad. I have to say, if you're a digital artist and you got the money, please get an iPad. iPads are just so nice to use. I drew this for class. Uh, Dark Crystal Resistance just came out and I made this painting of, of Deet for it. I really love Dark Crystal, by the way. Uh, rec I recommend you watch it. And yeah, it's a it's acrylic, so I'm not the best at acrylic, but this is absolutely the best I could do at acrylic. I can't do any better than this. <laughs> this is my max. I maxed out my level here. Maybe I could do the leaves better now, but the skin I can't. I can't top that. Like that's it. Here's more Asuka. I love Asuka, <laughs> as you could tell. <laughs> I really, really love Asuka. Sorry for the cut. I had to sneeze again. <laughs> 
I always be cutting my footage when I have to take a big sneeze. I love Asuka. I really like this piece. It's just sitting in my sketchbook though, which is kind of sad, but... And the scan is pretty low res, so it's kind of be hard to make a print of or something. Uh, some slight city pop furry art, which I would dabble in every now and then. If I was making furry art at this point, it would definitely be in that city pop style. I like 1984, that's a good song, and I have no idea what that says, by the way. I probably just Google translated something. Uh, I did this for a guy on Reddit. If you go on Reddit, you could find Reddit Draw Me, which is this nice subreddit where people will draw you on Reddit and they could use you as a subject. I've been meaning to do more of those, but I really wanted to do maybe a digital painting. And this is probably my only digital painting that you'll ever see from me. This is as good as it gets. <laughs> Here, this is in my sketchbook too. Most of these are sketchbook drawings, but. Halloween fan art. Halloween's coming up, guys. It's October. I did this for a zine that um, is now defunct. I'm really sad about it, actually. Uh, I did a lot of art for this zine, only for it to just explode in on itself. The uh, person running it just quit out, which sucks, but it happens, I guess. And I did this piece of Kermit, and he's just so cute. I should make a print of this. I can't, it's not for a zine anymore. What if I did a Kermit print? I might, I might do that. I might bring this to anime New York City. <laughs> Cause it's cute, come on. <laughs> here's some, here's a drawing of Lane. It's a sketch in my sketchbook. More Lane. I don't like this one as much. The hair is kind of strange. Actually, the shading is kind of strange too. But it's weird. I don't know. There's kind of something nice about how weird it is. But yeah, some ser serial experiments lane fan art. Here's Misato from Evangelion. Lots of just ink, inking, and black and white and stuff in my sketchbook. I was doing a lot of that. Uh, just whenever, whenever I could, I would just be inking in my sketchbook. Uh, here's more Nanami. I, uh, the, I love Nanami. She's my favorite Utena character. She is the best. There's no one that could top her. So this is a screen cap redraw. Here's some oops. City pop art, city pop furry art. I like the combination of those two genres. So I would ever, every now and then I would work with furry art, but in city pop style. And I still would like to do that. Like. If I ever go back to furry art, I'd want it to be in this city pop kind of style. But obviously I'd refine it more. Uh, here's Ray from Evangelion. This is a weird drawing, isn't it? The hand. I didn't sketch it. That's one of the reasons why it's so weird. Because I didn't come in with a sketch, I just started laying in ink. Which is a daring approach to draw anything. Uh, but that's what I did. I'm very edgy with this one. I go, let me just ink it out. Who needs to sketch? <laughs> Here's human Rolf from Animal Crossing. <laughs> Rolf, but he's a he's a human. Uh, man, he'd be looking like a daddy here. Can I tell you that? <laughs> I wanted to make him uh, like Hispanic because he talks about. Um, he mentions Hispanic food in like uh, in his in a lot of his dialogue, like drinks and stuff. So I figure that he's some sort of. Uh, Spanish, native Spanish speaking, uh, darker complexion guy, maybe South American or something, I don't know. <laughs> Just my guess. <laughs> Here's uh, some shining fan art. Uh, this one's pretty cool actually, but once again, it's like in my sketchbook, so kind of sad. These were character designs for a commission that I did. And it came out nice, actually. They look pretty cool. I'm not, uh, they're kind of weird. Kind of a weird, uh, commission. But all good, you know. I don't like these two, but I like this one the most. This one's, uh, pretty neat. The, just the pose is really cool. And there's my ink work that you could see, like, uh, look at my inking. It looks like how it looks now. We're finally going full circle. Okay, 2020, I'm gonna show you one drawing from. I'm gonna show you the whole folder and I'm gonna pick a drawing that I like. 
And I will choose the Attack on Titan drawing with my mom. <laughs> I did a bunch of art with my mom. My mom and I were watching a lot of anime together at the time. So for her birthday, I drew the both of us in every anime that we'd seen. So she's like the scout here and I'm the Titan back there. And I just, this is probably my favorite piece of the year, I think, 2020. And then 2019 is, I mean, 2021, sorry. 2021 is pretty, uh, hasn't, the folder hasn't been updated, so not all my art is in here, but no, I don't want to open that one. That's not my favorite. Uh, the Chainsaw Man piece is definitely my favorite. Yeah, this is one of my more recent illustrations. And it's definitely my my favorite one from the year. And this will definitely be at Anime NYC. This is this year, so... Um, I'm excited to create more art this year. As you can see, I've upgraded in, in immensely since the beginning. If you're watching this from the beginning... Congratulations, we made it! We made it to the end! My art looks like this now. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Like, if you compare this with, like, my first digital drawing... Um, when was that? Maybe, yeah, maybe we want to take this guy since he's the first human that I drew. If you look at this guy and this one, sorry, let me move myself. Uh, let me get myself out of the way. Look at that. What the hell is this improvement? So good. It's crazy, isn't it? Look at the face difference. Wow. Hold up, if you look at his nose, I bet you I drew another nose just like that. Look at his nose and then look at her nose. It's the same nose. It's the same exact nose. <laughs> Nothing's changed. <laughs> anyway guys, uh, thank you so much for coming by and for looking at my stuff with me. Maybe I'll go over here so you guys could see properly. Thank you guys so much for coming here and just like, spending time um, looking at my art with me. It's been so much fun. And I know this video is super long, but if you made it all the way to the end, please subscribe. I'm, always, I'm almost hitting 100 subs and I'm gonna do a really huge raffle event over on Twitch soon. So if you wanna see my art on a more consistent basis, please go follow me on Twitch. I'll link it in the description and I just really hope that you enjoyed this, and if you did watch this entire video, I don't care if you watched it on two times speed or not, thank you so much, that's so cool, that means a ton to me. I know not really anyone watches the entire thing for any YouTube video, ever. Audience retention is hard, but I really do appreciate it, and I hope that you guys liked this sort of tour through all my art. I had to do it eventually, you know, I had to. I had to. I hope you guys all have a good rest of your day and a good weekend and a good October or whenever you're watching this. I hope that you have a good rest of your day and thanks so much for joining me and keep drawing. You'll improve too. Everyone improves. There's no way to not improve. If you don't, if you're drawing, you're improving just naturally. So don't get don't be so hard on yourself with your art. Keep your chin up. Keep creating. If you if you're having a good time, and you're enjoying it, and you like it, keep doing it. That's all I have to say. Have a good day. Bye!